All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to State of the Federation. I am your host, Delta Angel Fire, and here we discuss all the ins and outs, the ups and downs of everything Star Trek Attack Wing. Joining me this fine evening are going to be our usual friends, Tucker and David. Tucker, say hi. If you're there. My lost Tucker. Greetings David, how are you doing? from sunny Seligman, Arizona. No, I'm ah, not here. Arizona, nice. Can you not hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Uh, that's weird. Uh, maybe I'm lagging a little bit. I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, Seligman, Arizona. I am on. I am moving to Santa Fe, and you have caught me halfway. But I am making a stop to talk s Star Trek Attack Wing with you. Because we're all a bunch of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could get I could get to Santa Fe at a reasonable hour, or I could talk about a tackling for an hour and a half. How is this a decision? <laughs> David, how are you doing today? I, hey, I, I I'm doing pretty good. I got nothing to complain about, and uh, since I'm not moving to Santa Fe, I'm kind of enjoying oh. enjoying the the weather and uh, enjoying Star Trek and all those good stuff coming off. Uh, <laughs> OP2, second place, and uh, watching my hopes at winning overall fade into the dust that was my Vorchad blown up by a Warp War breach. Second place? What? That's it. You're fired. We only take winners here. <laughs> oh, well. See you guys. It's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but we're good. So today we are going to be looking at... Uh, I guess it's getting a little more controversial as some of these releases are coming out. We're looking at the Stargazer, which has some crazy shenanigans that I'm sure we're going to go over. The Assimilation Target Prime, our grand prize for this storyline event. And last Meh. but not least, how to win these wonderful prizes, some strategy for OP3 at the end of it. Sound good to you guys? Sounds good. All right. Yeah, so since, let's do it. Yeah, since there's a lot to talk about, I think we should get right into it. And let us start with the Stargazer. I think it's kind of safe to say that this is one that's been anticipated for a while, that people have been waiting for uh, young Picard and what kind of upgrades his ship will have. Yeah, I think that's safe to say. And, and I think most people figured that Picard, this young Picard would not be nearly as useful as his uh, starter set counterpart. Spoiler, they were right. Yeah. Well, we can that can be debated, but but yeah, the uh, the ship is not too bad. So let's go over the stats. We've got your name. Uh, hmm? But before we before we do that, really quickly, I want to. I know we don't normally talk about this, but one thing to expect if you haven't seen it at home, folks, is the model. The model is the same size as the tiny prize. This surprised a lot of people. Oh, is it? I have not seen that picture yet. Yeah, that's 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 what we're hearing over the interwebs. I do not have one. So so it's gonna. I have, so we're looking kind of like at the super tiny with the with the nacelles that break off if you look at them the wrong way. Yep. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's basically the uh, the length of the ship is about mm. length of the base of a of any given ship. Hmm. Yeah, it would be nicer if it was about as big as Miranda, but I guess that's just yeah. another uh, Minnie's quality thing. Scale. <laughs> ships ships in scale may not be as large as they appear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, driving joke. I understand that. <laughs> All right. So just getting started here. Constellation class, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3 attack, 1 defense, 4 hull, 2 shields, 20 points, not too bad. It's got a 180 degree forward firing arc, a pretty a fairly standard kind of Federation dial, the usual actions. Its upgrade slots are lacking. The generic has a weapon slot and a crew slot. The Stargazer has a tech, a weapon, and a crew. So what do we think about that so far? Um, I like the tech on the Stargazer itself. Federation tech isn't the most abundant thing in the world. Mm -hmm. um, one weapon seems to be in line with everything. 
that one crew slot hurts though. Uh, mm -hmm. I like I typically like having two crew slot on my federation ships or more. Yeah, the the thing about this for me is the decision to drop the tech slot to me is just mystifying because at this point I'm not really sure I ever want to run a generic stargazer over a generic enterprise. Now, I'm happy in as much as this is going to be a sought after prize ship, but I was expecting a little bit something more like the generic Nova versus the generic Miranda, where the Miranda is a little bit more maneuverable, but the Nova and has the greater firing arc, but the Nova has the tech slot. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, without I think a tech slot is really being kind of like the opportunity cost for for ships nowadays. Kind of that uh, what's mm -hmm. the word I'm looking mm -hmm. for? The standard, because. Compared to other upgrades, tech have some of the biggest, you know, changing the game kind of deals among them. Right, and since the generic constitution is more crew than this, the same set stats and a similar dial and the same firing arc, I'm mystified as to why I'd ever run a generic stargazer. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. a constellation, I should say. Yeah. The unique stargazer, though, is pretty good, and it gives an ability, which is also pretty neat. During oh my god, this ability. During the activation phase, you may disable one of your active shields to remove one auxiliary power token from beside your ship. That is the cheapest I've ever seen to get rid of an auxiliary power token ever. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> you, don't even have to, you don't even have to disable an upgrade. That's nuts. This is going to break things. Mark my words. This is going to cause problems. It's like, remember all those things that like to give you double power tokens? Well, you can use it on the Stargazer. You can get rid of two power tokens a turn without any other upgrades whatsoever. Yep. Ooh, ooh, enhanced hull plating. Synergizes <laughs> with disabling a shield. See, someone's on point today. Two points for Tucker. Yay! I'll use them to buy costs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wait. Why do you want costs on the Stargazer, though? You, you can't so, attack me now. I have cost. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a that's a pretty spectacular ability. It's a good thing it's tied to a ship, or else everyone would want it. Yeah, yeah and it's a good thing it's tied to a ship with three attack, and when you disable the shield, six total hit points. Mm hmm. And another thing that was pretty neat is that this does fit fairly well with the. Uh, the entire theme of the pack. And mm -hmm. we can start mm -hmm. with Mr. Picard. Well, I guess Mr. Picard doesn't really fit that theme, but hey, we're getting there. So, our captain, Jean-Luc Picard, as a kind of younger man. I wish they would have used the younger Picard for the picture here. Man, there, there, are, two, there are two major picture fails today, and they're both on captains, and this is the first one. Yeah. I guess we get mind-controlled Picard, though. So... Yeah, that's first, true. first thing he does is add a crew upgrade slot to your upgrade bar. This seems to be the, the fancy thing that all the new kids are doing these days and adding more crew slots. I'm, uh -huh. not, I'm not mad about it, mind you. I just kind of wish that they had started it a little sooner. I agree with that. Right. Action. Disable all of your remaining shields and immediately perform an additional green or white maneuver. He is a six skill, has one talent, costs four points. Tucker, you were disappointed in this one? Confirm for me that it says green or white. I'm looking at the picture right now. It says green or white. Someone someone okay. put up a thing so, on the uh, on a transcription that said it was only green, but that was not correct. Right. Okay, so that that's a little bit less disappointing to me now. Um, I like that a lot more now. Mm -hmm. uh, so disabling all your shields uh, is less of a cost. In fact, I really like this now. Um, as we all know, I am a fan of enhanced talk plating. Um, I'm a fan of ablative armor. So I like a card that says I can get in your face turn one on a ship with a forward six. Transwarp driver Voyager. Especially Voyager. I'll disable all my shields. Well, Fed has technology that lets you get lets you defend with disabled shields, you know. It has ablative armor. It has enhanced hull plating. It even has uh, what, was, what was the thing from the Raven? The uh, oh, reinforced the structural adaptive integrity shields or whatever. Thing? Yeah. Oh no, the other hull yeah. plating. Yeah. And, so and don't forget cheat death if all else fails. Right, and right, exactly. So it has a lot of 
it, it more than any other faction is like, well, I can afford to disable all my shields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, what, I'm gonna say one of the things I really like about this is I, I'm always a fan of extra maneuvers. The fact that it's tied mm -hmm. to Picard's six skill hurts it a little bit, but the sheer range of things you can do with it. Like this was originally a thing. This was originally something that only came on a flagship, and you couldn't do it to yourself. Right. So with if this, um, with this kind of maneuverability, you know, you can do two white turn maneuvers, and you have you have a full come about, a full about, or whatever. They notice it also, the by the way, you say the fact this is on a low skill captain hurts. Well, the Fed, the Fed have the best way to mitigate that. They have more captain skill increases than anyone else in the game. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you could, you know. Pop Admiral yeah. Kirk uh, and the fleet uh, captain uh, on him. Yeah, that's 10 captain skill now. Mm. And yep. 10 is definitely nothing to sneeze at. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't even want to take that route, there's always Martok 8, so you get to move at skill 8 rather than 6. For that. <laughs> That's also true. Okay. Now that is nice. Uh, and that lets you, see, lets you see a little bit more about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with the, the extra maneuver is really nice because if you're moving, if you're moving light, later, it's easy to get out of arc, so losing your shields doesn't matter as much. Mm -hmm. Especially with a 180 degree firing arc. Yeah. But, uh, if you're moving first, you have, like, unprecedented ability to try to get in somebody else's way. And you know what you could do, even, is, um... I wonder if there's a way for you to stack this and the flagship bonus and go, like, 18 forward in one turn. And yeah. fly straight off the board? Well, it'd be hard, because you'd have to do this guy's maneuver first... So he would be like 12 ahead, and then you have to get within that range one of that 12 ahead with your other ship. Yeah, that would be tough, wouldn't it? Then I think an 18 of head gets you, puts you off the board. Maybe. We could add some ion thrusters in there, right? That makes it a 19? <laughs> S something like that, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Or you want, yeah, anyways. I I'm a fan of this card. But yeah, any other any other thoughts on this guy? Other, uh, I like him on Voyager. I, I think for a while mm -hmm. Voyager's been a ship that needs a more useful captain, and this Picard fits that because there are, Voyager has a lot of flexibility in its maneuver. Mm -hmm. um, and it is nice for it and, to finally be able to turn around. Yeah, and. For a blade of armor, of course, Voyager does, has a way of not caring if its shields are disabled. <laughs> right. Indeed. Yeah, the, like, really the only thing that hurts this card is the fact that you can't run other Jean-Luc Picard with it. Yeah, and that's a major downside. I do think he'll have his places, though. All right. Shall we move on? Picard Maneuver? Sounds good. The, mm -hmm. the, the titular namesake's Maneuver of... Wow, that's all I'm gonna. That's all I can really say. It's I, I'm I'm already stumbling over myself. Action! If you performed a three forward, four forward, or five forward maneuver this round, discard this card and immediately perform an additional five forward maneuver. Place an ox power token beside your ship. All attacks against your ship this round are at minus four attack dice. This is a talent. It's five points, and it's unique, of course. This is some speed right here. Yes. I really hope you guys like engaging tactical cubes on the first turn at minus four attack dice. <laughs> I mean, minus four attack dice makes you practically immune to half the ships in the game. Yep. Yeah. Most, even the, the biggest ones will be rolling one or two attack dice at you. Three if they're a flagship board cube. Four if they have triples. <laughs> triples. But yeah, just minus four out. attack dice is pretty incredible and it's and uh, rather than a lot of the other upgrades that debuff your opponents this one is works against all attacks against you it's not like one attack from one ship or you know that's this one ship can't attack you this turn and you still get your own attack of course right plus and you know sorry go ahead oh 
Never mind. It is a Discord. Okay. Hmm. Well, Sorry, no, I, th- th- that's that's the thing, though. I actually wanted to say that this is normally I hate expensive elite talents that require you to discard them. This one I don't care because this is an alpha strike the, right here. This only needs to happen for one turn. In other words, if you're moving ten across and no one can really shoot at you this turn, you're probably set up to take it out a ship or two, and you're not going to need that for the rest of the game. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. It 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 has a it has a nice similarity to Incha, and I've I've liked I've liked Incha for a long time. I would I would run this over Incha any day. Oh yeah. Let's see. Uh, other good things that might not be immediately noticeable about it. This is an action to do this mover. So if you have multiple actions on your ship, you can do them first, then do your five forward. And if you bump into somebody, nobody cares. Mm, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Because you're not losing. Because you can't. Even if you're losing your actions, you already took all the ones you needed anyway. Well, you'll be losing your actions because you'll get that auxiliary power token. Yeah, there's that too. Eh. But, I mean, well, you know, then again, there's Stargazer, there's uh, Auxiliary Control Room, there's Scotty, there's ways around that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And most things are going to probably be looking at dying after they get hit by this anyway. Mm-hmm. Which is, which is sort of my point. You know, as you said, minus four attack dice is most of the ships in the game. You know, if you run out there and you kill a ship... Effectively, what does this talent do? It gets you next to your opponent and reduces their attack die by four. Well, if you kill a ship, you've permanently reduced their attack die by four, and you're permanently next to them as long as you want to be. So even if this is a one-use talent, basically, if you can kill a ship, it just goes on for the rest of the game, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's another point I wanted to make. As a, it, It's not negating an attack, but it's so darn close Every other card, most other cards in this game that negate attacks are either well. There's ten point barrel. Well, let's not let's not count her for the moment. There is you know Corbomite maneuver or Aladar Jirak or something like all these things that let to, in order to stop people from attacking at you, you have to give up your attack. This one does yes. not have that restriction. This is a pure uh, net positive for for number yep. of attacks you can make. This card, more than possibly anything besides cheap death, makes me worry about when they eventually decide to put something in the game that lets you reuse discard elite talents. Mm-hmm. Mm. I I think I hope they learn. I would have hoped they learned their lesson lesson from Wayun, but as we saw from the uh, Vulcan ship. Will, if we're going to talk about lessons learned in play testing, play testing, it may be time to go to the next card. <laughs> Sounds good to me. How about secondary impulse reactor sound to you guys? All right. Oh, well, not quite, a, not quite what I meant, but okay. Se- secondary impulse reactor. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, we got to keep moving, right? Secondary impulse reactor. During the activation mm-hmm. phase, if you reveal a red maneuver and you have an auxiliary power token beside your ship, you may disable this card to perform that maneuver with no penalty. It is a one singular point tech upgrade for the Federation. Not unique. Not unique either, yes. I was just I'm mostly going with one point. Yeah. I'll take it for one point, man. That's 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 better than clag usually. Yeah. I guess I guess it just depends all on the, what uh, does. If you're using the tech upgrade fleet captain. Make it cheap. Make it make it free. <laughs> yeah, and give it to every ship. Why not? Yeah, I guess it really depends on what does it mean with no penalty. Does that mean you don't get an additional power token? Because already you have to assume that you, your opponent does not get to change your maneuver dial, which is the usual rule for uh, a, an, a red maneuver with a power. That's an token. interesting question. So then, do you get what? Do you either have one power token after that, or two tokens after that, or, or? If you're doing some shenanigans where you have seven power tokens next to your ship, I wonder how we could get that to happen. Tiny prayers. <laughs> you can use this Chicken to pull way. your you can use this to pull your red maneuver, you know, right when you need it. And that can be helpful. Uh-huh. Remind me, does someone have three um, captains? Combos. Right I'm sorry? 
I'm gonna check something real quick here about fleet captains. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's a combo with uh, uh, the emergency medical hologram and flocks. Right. Use the EMH to not disable the tech. Use flocks to re-enable the EMH. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's also. Sorry, okay. I'm looking at wording on, on something. I thought uh, I was onto a cool combo with the Federation fleet captain, but that does the Federation fleet captain does say it is an action. If it was not an action, that would have been crazy. But so, uh, still not terrible. The Federation, the, the Federation fleet captain says it. What? That doesn't make any sense. The target ship uh, for a Federation fleet captain. Just real quick. The target ship immediately removes one disabled upgrade token from one of its disabled upgrades as a free action. I didn't know. I didn't remember if it had that as a free action part on there. Because if it didn't, you could take off the disabled token and still keep all your auxiliary power tokens. Oh, I see. I got it. I see. I see where you're going with that. Okay, that makes sense. That's just how my mind works. But apparently, that was thought of beforehand. Maybe. Or it was a happy action. <laughs> All right, so based know. on other cards in this pack, I'm leaning towards happy accident. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's let's leave that one for now. Let's go on to Jack Crusher right now for this part. Uh, let's see. Two point Federation crew unique. During the modified defense dice step of the combat phase, you may discard this card and spend one evade token to add two evade results to your roll. For two points. Why not? I'm, I mean, he's, he's, he still seems better than Red Shirt. Yeah. Yeah, but the, th the thing is, what I was thinking about this, is if this card had come out earlier, it would have been good. But at this point, there are just, there are just too many better cards, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. th this, this, this guy says, effectively, your ship gets plus one shield. Yeah. Which is which is which is not bad. I mean, two points is the price for plus one shield, but he takes a crew slot. You know, he's. I mean, what would you rather run, him or Miles O'Brien? You know. Mm. Plus, yeah. with Jack, you already have to have taken the evade action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I can see him comboing nicely with ransom. That's what I was thinking too. And that's about it. I, I don't see a lot of use for Jack Crusher, but if you're either using him on a flagship that gives you a free evade, or you have a way to get a free evade... Uh, if you have the RIS Vo as some kind of tech carrier or something. Sure. Um, uh, also, I... he would work with the uh, starter set data card. I know nobody runs data... <laughs> and I'm not saying that's a good combo, but it is a combo that actually works. Look, when you're working this hard to, to use bad cards together, <laughs> you know. All right, it's official. Nobody likes Jack Crusher. Nobody likes Jack Crusher. Nobody. Not even Beverly. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Uh, you know, at least he's alright for a two-point crew. Maybe you can throw him on something that just is looking to defend and not do any kind of attacking. But yeah, there's probably still better options. Yeah. And after that, after a poor Jack Crusher, you know, shuffles off this uh, mortal coil, we have our new uh, uh, thing to yell about. Yeah. Uh, oh boy. Luster about. I guess we know for certain that we're talking about the tactical station. Oh, God. Just read it. Four-point weapon upgrade. Add one weapon upgrade slot to your upgrade bar. A weapon that provides a weapon ah. slot. When attacking, you may disable this card to gain one attack die until the end phase. Or you may discard it to gain two attack dice until the end phase. Okay, so the first thing to say about this is if you have Toth Gore... Sakona, and the weapon fleet captain, this costs zero points, 
and you can use an infinite number of them. Infinite. Infinite weapon recursion. So, if you feel like buying a hundred stargazers, congratulations, you win everything ever. <laughs> I was going to say, one of the uh, people at one of my venues was like, well, you know, if this is part of the game, then maybe we can get back to, you know, three or four ship fleets, since only one ship will take the uh, the major hit in the first round. Then I'm like, no, no, you can put this on a Borg vessel with full assault. That's that's three targets of infinite dice on your first turn. Goodbye. Yeah. Okay, uh, I guess it wouldn't yeah. work. I guess it wouldn't work quite as well because you would need, you know, it wouldn't be infinite. They would all cost one point. But still, there are ways around that. There's there's By Ferengi the time missile you have launchers. Forty of them. Thirty of them. I mean, that's only plus sixty attack dice, right? Yeah. Now, now, Will. The Borg aren't broken. You still get a turn. <laughs> hey, uh, look, to be fair, you know, okay, Borg have full assault, but, you know, Cardassians have Koronak. E everybody is once more into the breach if you're not playing Faction Pure. You know. You guys can't see it, but I did just put up that picture on, on the air. It's, look, this is... Uh, this is not the Borg's fault. This is the Federation. The Federation <laughs> get to be the most broken faction now. Like, how many tactical stations can you fit on a ship? Honestly, I can just I can just I actually, see the interior designer now. It's like, oh, how tactical actually, station for you, and a tactical actually, station for you, and a tactical station for everybody. <laughs> I actually just po posted the other day on the uh, Attack Wing community. Uh, I was like. Uh, Mr. Wolf, fire torpedoes. I cannot, sir. I can't get through all these tactical stations. <laughs> oh, goodness. So yes, guys, oh, this God. this might be a problem. And by might, I mean it yeah. definitely is. But I'm yes. trying not to be super alarmist or people will say, oh, you're such a super alarmist. Well, even if somebody's only running five, I mean, that's still plus ten attack dice. Mm -hmm. I mean... Think about you know think about op op three here for a second like this is this and all of the ways you have to go forward really fast in in op three this is just going to ruin the environment. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, this only comes as a surprise in op three, so maybe that will curb that for one month. Oh yeah, it's not as if you can buy stargazers on eBay now. That'd be ridiculous. Who would be selling them right now before they were even? Oh. Yep. It exists. It all Actually, exists. hilariously, the Stargazer and uh, the Picard Maneuver were spoiled by an eBay listing. Before anybody else. Yeah. Um, tactical Station is going to take one of two things. Either WizKids needs to errata it, which I doubt... Or tournament organizers need to actually be smart about it, which I think that most will be, and make this kind of like a combo combat vessel variant where it's one per ship. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, it's a good card, and it's not insanely broken. Oh man, I just realized this is gonna these cards are gonna be legal for the regional events. Man, now I gotta now I gotta win like fifteen stargazers. Yeah, no, I realized that a while ago, too. It's just, the only saving grace is that um, this build, unless you're doing something like Once More into the Unto the Breach, this loses to Wayne Verrill. And I never thought I would say that was a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. All right. Yeah, in fact, so, I, I think it still loses to Wayne Verrill and Lee Nollis, actually, even with Once More. Anyway, sorry. Mm -hmm. So... Stargazer as a whole. Uh, some really good cards and some really stupid good cards. And then there's uh. Jack Crusher. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, definitely likes a worthy Jack prize, Crusher. wouldn't you say? Yeah, Nobody I, likes Jack Crusher. I, I think overall, if accepting Tactical Station, 
it's a solid price pack. It's cards the that have their uses. It's nothing that you absolutely have to have. Um, but you can do some darn when, cool stuff with. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's options. And options are always a good thing. And uh, I will say this, with the, with the exception of uh, tactical stations, you know, secondary impulse reactor isn't unique, but it's not a must-have. This is, again, another prize pack where really you can get by with only one of everything, which I love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excepting, of course, tactical station, but we won't go into that anymore. You know what? That, uh, that, uh, uh, 